okay, now I can hear myself. My name is Derek, I'm from UBCO. Uh, today I'm going to talk about managing and securing, securing your digital identity. Now I also want to share a little bit about our profession. We have evolved from a technical solution tinker to actually more threat focused tinker. What I meant by that, I meant by it's like you're playing chess. You must understand your adversary, the bad guys. What are they planning next? What is the difference between physical identity and digital identity? Now, 40 years ago to be exact, 1983, we have the internet invented. Before that, we we're all using our pass key. I mean, not pass key, I mean, uh, ID, passport, and that is how we identify ourselves. And subsequently, with more and more internet provider, yourself transform into cloud, you are using more about digital identity. Now, what is going on now? Personally, myself, I have at least 50 to 100 IDs to sign on. I have all these passwords almost similar. I used to work in a SOC. Uh, I can actually see 67% of the internet traffic in the telco company and I can access the dark web. I even saw my ID is being sold there. Don't be surprised, yours is already in the dark web. Okay, so it's so easy to guess your ID and password now. In fact, you can even see it somewhere. And the hackers today are no longer hacking you, they are logging you. Okay, now I'm just going to summarize this 20 minutes into a one simple solution that could is actually the most effective. Currently, if you heard about FIDO, Fast Identity Online, they are combining both physical and digital, all right, to access to your credentials. That is FIDO. The other names that you want to call is a passkey, which is a no more password, it's passkey. You heard about passwordless, all right, zero trust. All this is part of FIDO initiative or the alliance are actually creating it. Now, how, why FIDO or why we need to change? A very serious problem is that even, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a Singaporean. Uh, two months ago, we experienced, the government website experienced a very big hack. Now. This part of the world is actually, I call them the small time hackers. They are attacking you on an individual basis, but doesn't mean there's a small amount. Our pension fund is about 100 over 1,000, each at least minimum, okay? They are stealing from the citizen. Going on to the right side, these are the corporate hackers. They are very well organized. Take them, Look at them like a drug cartel. They plant, they harvest, they even distribute the drugs. And this group of people are going for big time your corporate data. They want to sell it, they put you on a ransom, and they got millions or even billions out of it. And the last bottom, another group of hackers, this is major. These are state fund, all right? This is no joke. They want to take you down. Now, you might have heard about Sony. They have been hacked. All their server has been destroyed. It's not just about corporate issue. It's more political than that. They want you to wipe you out. It takes many months for them to recover. So, what's the problem? If you look at the title, they don't hack you anymore. They actually block you. Do we have a lock-in issue? We seriously have a lock-in issue. So let me show you what is the problem now. Now, you heard about phishing. There are many ways to, I told you, they, sometimes they don't even need to fish you. They already saw you on the dark web. Your Netflix is the same as your Spotify, whatever, even your bank account. Almost have the same similar ID and the password. If you are continuing with that, unfortunately, we are. This is what's going to happen. Most of the data breach is caused by the first line of defense. All right. Now you can put in a lot of parameter defense, you can put in a firewall, you can put in a lot of 
anti-malware software, whatever. It doesn't help if your user or yourself are vulnerable. They can come in, okay? So this is a serious issue, and let me, let, uh, I don't know whether have you really faced a major data breach. In today's context, all right, if you are faced with a major data breach, you know who, are the, who you find you'll be meeting first? Your lawyers, okay? Because they will be asking you major questions like, do we have compliance in place? Have you practiced it? What is your artifacts? These three. If you're unable to answer them, it's going to be a lot more problem because at court, nothing can be produced to protect yourself. All right? So let me move, in, move along. Now the, the problem is quite serious. It's the most secure form or the least secure form is still very well practiced. So a lot of people will say that, yeah, ID password is the best practice. I put in 2FA, yeah, I got HTTP, you know, the one-time power pin and all stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. That is the least secure being practiced. Now, I mean, these are some of the statistics. I was always like to use Singapore because uh, we're supposed to be the one that is always moving forward, but we are still lagging big time globally, all right, that how to secure ourselves. So even 2FA, SMS or OTP, they are not secure. Let me show you why. What is phishing? So I, I told you, uh, they may have your password ID, yeah, but you have 2FA, you think you're fine because you will receive your PIN. So what happened is that most of the users, including myself, we are being uh, vulnerable because we might log in into a fake login page. It could be a CD bank. Now, in the past, I would say even present, you can see CD bank, everything looks exactly the same, only the URL could be the bank, the A spell reverse. Okay? Or sometimes it could be a zero or one, you can't tell. Or zero or O, you can't tell. Today, the phishing fake page, no longer you can tell. The URL will not tell you. It's a mirror page. They got a mirror fake phishing, all right? It look exactly URL as the same one, just like you're logging in here instead of the real site. So what happened? The bad guys actually put this page, entice you to log in, and you actually log in. When you key in on the fake page, he actually has a user and ID. Okay? Wait. Then you actually, the real website, he will at the same time key in the real website, will issue you the OTP. Okay? But when they issue to you, what, would, what did you do? You key in the pin again. And that's where he got everything. He doesn't need to go to the dark web and buy something. He got everything just in a very simple way of a fake web page. This is what we call phishing. Fido is trying very hard. Or actually, it's not hard. Fido actually stopped this. Okay, let me just show you the another. How does Fido, Fast Identity Online, to stop this? Okay, you must understand a little bit of theory around here. Fido needs two keys. They call it pass key. No more password, pass key. Previously, ID password is only one key and it's stored in your server. That is called your credential in your AD directory or whatever, all right, active directory. Either the big time hacker will, like I said, the drug cartel will stole the whole entire thing. The small time will kind of come and fish you on the identity just one on by one, okay? This is the vulnerable, whether OTP, it doesn't make sense. So FIDO needs two key. If you don't have the second key, we'll call the private key, not the public key, the private key, which is you kept, literally you can keep in your pocket. Eh? Or you can put on your phone. That is FIDO. I will tell you which level, what FIDO level you are if you have already implemented. So what happens if the same thing, you saw a fake login page, the back actors actually got your user ID, 
Now, FIDO will not issue you a PIN or OTP. It will actually check. Uh, this is the device used by the back actor being registered at least once. FIDO, you need to register that I have been using this device at least once. So with that, it will ask you, hey, yeah, this is a new device. Would you like to plug in or enter your passkey? Or just show your passkey. So the passkey is actually a physical key. That's why I say physical plus a digital combined to make it very secure. And there's no way. Now, actually, all the hackers are very concerned because they are lazy also. They are trying very hard to overcome and defeat FIDO, which today, I think uh, that is something almost impossible. Google has used it for many years. All the tech company, Amazon, Facebook, I mean, all these are the corporate people. They are tr trying to protect your contents. They have been using FIDO. Okay, so let's see how it evolves. I will not go too far back behind. Let's go forward. You heard of U2F, which is uh, FIDO U2F. It's still not so secure because it's still the uh, two-factor authentication like HOTP or, or PIN stuff. Then we got FIDO 2. And now we are going to the pass key. That's why I say there must be two keys. And the most important thing is that best is to keep it physical. Now, so how do I actually, all this has been done immediately. Everyone in the last two years during COVID, I can tell you, the government, the federal, the US, every single government is looking at it because the fishing situation is so bad. It's almost literally almost every one of us encounter it. All this, I would say that they are rushing to put something in place and they still endorse. NIST is one of the oldest and the most reputable. All right? They have endorsed fishing resistant MFA. Actually, in short, it's still fine. So what is NIST endorsing? Now, let's understand. They came up with this point, uh, this phrase, the darkened words, without, they, you're able to detect and prevent a user logging into a fake web page or whatever. Now, important to note, without reliance on the vigilance of the subscriber, that is a very important factor because it's very unfair to blame myself, blame you, any one of us here, to be fake, logging into a fake web page that I can't even tell from the URL. Almost impossible. So FIDO 2, smart card, you have, some of you have seen smart card, but it's a very old technology. It's again the physical card, but it's again two pass, all right? If you don't have anything physical, or you don't have the, even a phone you can use as a FIDO, all right, but I can say that this can f not phishing, uh, you got SIM swap. They can actually mirror and steal away. Uh, just now, there's one example that uh, Singapore got citizen got hacked. They were using handphone. So that is very simple. You is those people install an application, they were on FIDO, but that key was stolen because the apps actually mirror, stole away SIM swap. They stole away everything that what you do what you, they can do on another phone similar, all right? So this is where I come into. NIST, if you understand, is what we call the uh, authentication at all, uh, assurance number one, two, or three. Let's go on number one. You're very familiar with this, all right? All your tokens, you get a whole bunch of it for different applications. They are number one majority. In fact, it will have, won't help you. Level two is limited MFA. This is where you use a handphone as your passkey. It's still not going to protect you totally. That's why Singapore got hacked. Our citizen is really, they say, yeah, I got face recognition. I'm also FIDO, this is your passkey, but I can still steal because it's software bound. And the last one, maturity, maturity or we call AAL3, 
is actually almost impossible. Yeah, I would say that so far, no one actually achieved stealing from the FIDO NIST AAL3 level, all right? Because you must have the key. If you're gonna steal my key and you have the key, you still have a pin, it's not password, all right? They still need you to be physical, all right? So if you want to steal that key from me, that means it's no more cyber crime. We call it physical crime already, all right? You're a serious criminal, okay? I will say that I leave this uh, onto all the last slide, okay? Trusting digital identity. So remember one thing, all right? We are all professionals here. When you're faced with a data breach, prepare yourself. Make sure you're able to answer your lawyer. Three things. What is your compliance? Did you practice it? What are your art artifacts that you're ready to show me? All right? So. For this event, I think uh, it's important because we are moving very fast. Transformation means you are going mostly cloud, digital, you know, you, everything is going on digital. All your users trusted you, but you cannot trust them. The problem is that they will make mistakes. When you go on to a lit litigation, if you are able to show the three things, you know what will happen? Your user, your board of directors, your management, they will understand because there are bad guys out there and you have done what you have needed to do, all right? You are a victim. You will not be, you know, to be blamed for such incidents to happen. Thank you very much.